Okay, we're going to talk about the escalation clause. This is a very effective tool for you to use when competing in multiple offers. You should be able to find this form in the Form Simplicity Form Library or the Transaction Desk Library. This is a custom form that we've created with inside our office. So if you can't find access to this for some reason, please reach out to the office manager and they'll make sure to get you set up. The first thing you'll notice at the top of this form is that this is based off of the net price to the seller. Now, not the net price after commissions and title insurance and all of the seller's closing costs. We're talking about the net price of the buyer's offer. So for example, if the buyer's offer was for 300,000 and they were also asking for $5,000 in buyer paid closing cost, then their offer is really a net of say 295,000. Okay, so this is gonna focus on the net purchase price of the offer. Section one of the escalation clause focuses on the fact that there are multiple offers on the property. And if there are multiple offers, that the buyer is willing to increase their purchase price or net per purchase price to the seller by a certain dollar amount. So for example, if the property was $300,000 was the offer there again. So we have $300,000 and there's multiple offers in there and someone else is willing to pay $310,000 for the property. The escalation clause would kick in and, um, and go up whatever dollar amount increments you may want. We'll use $2,000 increments for the purpose of uh, this example. So if uh, someone else came in at $310,000, then the escalation clause would take your buyer's offer to $312,000. Now, to protect your buyer, there is a clause in there that says there's a cap. So if the buyer is not willing to pay over $310,000, it will cap out and the escalation clause won't kick in. But if the buyer was willing to pay up to $320,000 for this property, it will continue to go up based on any other bona fide offers that the seller will have to provide you copies of to, to prove that these offers were there. It'll go up in $2,000 increments or whatever amount that you put in there. Section two of the escalation clause has some key factors and some key points that you need to take into consideration of protecting the buyer's deposit or ability to close and get financing, as well as making the offer uh, and enticing to the seller. So it's going to ask you about the loan amount and the down payment amount. So you can either increase the amount down. Now you may want to do this if there are no, uh, there's not a lot of comps, not a comparable sales available, and you're worried about the appraisal and your buyer has more money to be able to put down. If not, if your buyer doesn't have more money or doesn't want to put more money down, they could increase their loan amount. But remember, the higher you increase, increase the loan amount, then you could end up um, getting denied on your loan due to value or some other issue. Now, you'll also see in this section too that you can cap the loan amount to say that the loan amount won't exceed this amount or that the loan amount will be a percentage of the pur purchase price. So choose carefully when you pick one of these that's going to fit your buyer in the situation best. Section three is going to point out that this escalation cause agreement is going to terminate after the contract has been accepted. So this is basically just a tool to get you to the correct purchase price that uh, maybe is going to beat out other competing offers or the correct price that is going to work for the buyer and seller um, when competing against these other offers. Section four is a disclaimer. Basically, us as agents, we don't want to force or advise that they have to use this clause. We want to make this available to them. And if the buyer feels that it's a good idea and it's something that they want to use and that they're willing to pay extra or finance more and they feel that it's going to help them because the inventory is so tight or the market is so competitive, then this is a good tool for them. But it's just simply a tool for us to let them know that's available. It's not something that we want to advise or put on every contract. And section five is going to talk about we still need an accepted contract. There again, this is just a tool stating to the buyer that we are willing to increase our price based on these terms. And then if that's the case, the buyer will need to adjust the contract to those terms and send it back to the buyer for them to sign. 
then you'll have a bilateral agreement um, between the buyer and seller. All right, I hope you find that helpful and I hope that helps you a little bit more with multiple offers and gives you a little edge on how to use the escalation clause.